Good afternoon, everyone. I'd like to thank you for joining us today for our webinar, Going Fully Mobile in Your Library, Eliminate the Desk and Improve Service. I'm Elisa Swergston, editor at DEMCO, and I'll be filling in for Liz Bowie as moderator of today's session. Before we get started, I just wanted to go through some housekeeping details, and then I'll introduce our speakers and they can start today's presentation. On your screens, you should see a question box on the right-hand side. If you have a question or need technical help, please use this box to communicate with us. We don't get to your question during the session. We will be posting questions and answers along with the recorded webcast, presentation slides, and resources after the event. You will receive an email in about a week letting you know when everything is available. You'll also notice both our presenters' contact information as well as ours. Please feel free to contact us directly with any questions that haven't been answered in the follow-up resources. We are also using Twitter today with the hashtag DemcoIdeas. You should be able to see this hashtag on the side of your screen in the chat box. We are monitoring that feed as well for questions and comments. I believe that's all the housekeeping, so let's get started with the program. As I mentioned, I'm Elisa Swergson and I am moderating today's session. And I'm very excited to introduce you to our speakers today, Kim Fender and Greg Edwards. Kim is the Eva Jane Romaine Coombe Director at the Public Library of Cincinnati in Hamilton County. She has more than 30 years of experience with libraries and has worked in many different settings, including a state agency, a corporate library, academic libraries, and public libraries, both small and large. Kim has received many awards throughout her career, including the 2009 Librarian of the Year Award from the Ohio Library Council and the Bridge Builder Award from the Cincinnati Hamilton County Community Action Agency. Kim has a BS in Anthropology from Northern Kentucky University, an MLS from the University of Kentucky, and a Certificate in Foresight Studies from the University of Houston. Greg is the Chief Library Experience Officer at the Public Library of Cincinnati in Hamilton County. He has 25 years of experience in public libraries, beginning his library career at the Midpoint Public Library in Middleton, Middletown, Ohio, where he worked as a reference librarian and later as a branch manager. After five years at Midpoint, he came to the Public Library of Cincinnati in Hamilton County as Manager of Circulation Services. He then received several promotions before assuming his current role. Greg holds a BA and MPA from Northern Kentucky University and an MLS from the University of Kentucky. We're so excited to have Kim and Greg with us today to talk about how their libraries successfully eliminated the service desk and went fully mobile. It looks like we're ready to get started with the program, but Kim and Greg, you can take it away whenever you're ready. Well, thank you, uh, Elise. Um, we're glad to be here with you today, and I see we've been unmuted, so hopefully everything is working and we can uh, go forward with the presentation. So we are talking today about going fully mobile, how to eliminate your service desk, eliminate barriers, and improve service to your customers. So first, a little background about the Public Library of Cincinnati in Hamilton County. We serve about 800,000 people in all of Hamilton County. We have our main library and 40 branches, and that totals about 930,000 square feet of space. We have nearly 900 staff, and in 2016, we were the second busiest library in the country with over 21 million items loaned. We are a library journal five-star library and have received two Urban Library Council's top innovator awards. So if we can make a mobile service model work and a library that has this many locations and that volume of use, we can make it work in any library setting. So we know that change is difficult. This is what our atrium at our main library used to look like when we had our card catalog. Uh, the card catalog, of course, required a great deal of manual work and um, was not easy to use with 40 branches to see what other locations had in their collections. And now with our OPAC today, it's much simpler to do that. And I am no longer getting calls from uh, tearful patrons wondering what happened to the card catalog. It happened actually for much longer than you would have expected after the card catalog was finally removed. Another change is from the physical books. This is a picture of our stacks to the digital books, which is, I'm sure like many of you, our fastest growing area of use. 
uh, from these kinds of reference items where we have our students here looking at items to doing their research online. For the phone reference, this is one of my favorite pictures. This is one of my former bosses, and he is surrounded by a selection of good reference tools and a rotary phone, but the most interesting thing is his cigarette. <laughs> that used to be uh, allowed when they worked at the desk uh, doing the phone reference questions. Where today our staff work in the Virtual Information Center, answering reference questions um, by email, by chat, by phone, uh, from one centralized location. And we moved from desk with queues, people lined up waiting to just borrow items, return items, pick up a hold, pay a fine, whatever they were doing, to the fully mobile service model, where our staff are roaming throughout the building and meeting our customers where they are. And when we look back at some of these changes, we would never want to go back to the workload uh, and the way we did things with the card catalog. And even if we did, today's customers would be very dissatisfied with the inadequacies of the systems if we did. So why mobile service? There were two things that kind of drove this change for us. First, the, the kind of explosion of self-service options available. Uh, we have self-check at all of our locations and 90, more than 90% of our circulation comes through self-checkout. We, uh, people register themselves for their library cards. They pick up their own holds. They can check in and return their own materials and they can pay their own fines online. And this significantly reduced the work that was being done at the service desk. And then the technology improved. There were tablets, good Wi-Fi, apps, easy account access, and web catalogs, all of which made it possible to move away from the desk. Here's some uh, of the rationale from a customer and library point of view. It certainly removes barriers to service. Uh, what one of the things we often heard was, I didn't ask the person at the desk because I didn't want to bother them. They were busy with something, when really they were just waiting for someone to come up and ask them a question. But uh, people walking into the library perceived that as being um, busy with something that was more important than their question. It's a better use of space. One of the things that we've been most astonished by is when we remove a desk from an existing branch, how much space we get back to use for other kinds of services. We go to the customers instead of waiting for them to come to us. So we can find them out in the stacks looking for a, a book or a movie and help them right there instead of them walking back to the designated desk area and then we both walk back to wherever they were and then they come back and check it out again later. It's, it's just a way to be right there. The better management of our facility because we are not fixed in one location but instead moving throughout the building, we can um, see if, if there, there's um, paper thrown on the floor that needs to be picked up. If there are kids who are getting a little too noisy, if there are uh, some sort of you know dispute over whose turn it is on the computer starting to develop. Plus, we can um, you know again tidy up the shelves, just keep everything in good order as we walk through the building. It does save money. Those desks are expensive to both build and maintain. And of course, the mobile service is being adopted in lots of other businesses. So our strategic plan that just ended last year included introducing new technologies to our community and exceeding customer expectations as part of our planning. And so we saw mobile services really fitting into introducing those new technologies and exceeding their expectations by anticipating when they might need assistance rather than waiting for them to come and ask. And then we had uh, included eliminating service desk to provide a welcoming environment as part of that plan as well. Now, I will tell you with 40 branches, they are not all fully mobile yet. It's going to take us a while to get there. Finally, our 2012 facilities plan included uh, constructing two new branches and renovating a historic building into a branch. And that gave us the opportunity to design buildings with a fully mobile service model integrated into it. This was a really interesting part of the project. Um, the architects, uh, innovative interfaces as our catalog, couldn't really seem to understand what we were trying to do. And they would ask me things like, 
Well, we didn't, I'd say, what is this on the plans? I told you we weren't having a service desk and they'd say, oh, that's not a desk, that's a node or that's a something else. They kept coming up with different names for the desk and we kept taking it back off the plans and reworking the area to be more of a service area. And we have some pictures of that later on to show you what those branches look like. And then Innovative asked us to actually send them a picture of a branch without a desk. And I said, it's a branch, just like any other branch, only there's no giant service desk right inside the door. But they came to visit instead because that seemed, again, to be a concept that was difficult to understand. And now Greg is going to take over from here. We're switching chairs. Uh, thanks, Kim. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, I'm going to go in, into some detail about kind of the timeline, um, how we got to where we are currently, you know, how the uh, fully mobile service model works, uh, give you some photos, and, and so you can have a sense of it, get a sense of, of what it looks like and how it operates. So from self-service. So we began kind of our move to self-service uh, quite a few years ago, and in 07, we began introducing self-check machines throughout the system, and we did it uh, in phases, as Kim pointed out, we're large systems, so we did it over a number of years. When we did it, however, it wasn't about just adding a service. It wasn't about just putting a self-check machine in, in the space and then if somebody wants to use it, use it. We really structured it so that we could drive, we would drive all that circulation traffic to the self-check machine. So, you know, staff would, when someone came in, they wanted to check out material, they say, you know, they would walk them over to the, to the self-check. Uh, the, you know, the, um, uh, the, the customer could check it out themselves. They would instruct them how to do it. If they didn't want to touch it, didn't want to do it themselves, then staff would check them out, but they would do it, um, at the self-check. So that was how we sort of, you know, emphasize the importance of self-check and really transition our customers to utilize that. And we're, we're 90 plus percent of utilization uh, of our circulation goes through self-checks. And, and that's very important. We found out later uh, as we rolled out fully mobile, that it's important that customers are used to um, and, uh, and very familiar with using self-check machines. In 09, we introduced something we call proactive customer service or PCS. Uh, and this is basically our first um, step toward trying to get staff to be more active and more proactive and out uh, uh, walking around the branch or department, uh, interacting with the customers and asking the customer, do you need help? Do you need some assistance? And they, we would get them actually to a point of every 15 minutes, every 20 minutes, whatever, walk around the space and simply uh, you know, ask people for if they needed any help or assistance. So really, again, it was our first stab at kind of getting folks moving around a little more and being a little more proactive in our service. In 2010, we introduced self-service hold, and I'm sure many, if not most, of the libraries uh, represented here today have self-service hold, and you probably experience, you know, some of the same sort of anxieties, maybe a lot of our staff, and uh, did here and that you're going to put holds out there. Everybody's going to start checking out somebody else's hold to start browsing through the hold shelves, on and on. But but we experienced really none of that. And it was a seamless uh, process and putting the holds out for the customer. And was really it was really interesting to see that change in flow. The, the whole dynamics of service change because folks would come in, get their own hold, walk over to self check, check it out, and out they would go. So we began to really change um, how how customers were using uh, our facilities. Then in, in 12, we introduced a virtual information center. And Kim showed you a, a photo of that earlier, or the VIC as we call it, uh, is where all that um, uh, communication from the outside, all that traffic is directed into the VIC. And that was important because it took a lot of phone traffic and a lot of just any of that, whether it's chat, email, whatever, away from the branches. So the branch staff were not tied to a phone. They were not tied to the desk necessarily uh, because most of that activity was going through the VIC. And while sometimes, you know, occasionally the VIC will have to forward a call to a branch because it's a you know, branch specific question that has to be answered by branch staff or somebody bypasses it and gets a hold of the branch, that, that, those things happen. But by and large, the, the vast majority of that traffic and that activity went straight to the VIC and really did free up branch staff to be more proactive and more active with, with our customers. And then in 12, we introduced, or, or sort of 
more robust Wi-Fi at all locations. So, you know, that, that included uh, increasing bandwidth to all of our locations, also uh, expanding, uh, increasing the number of hotspots. Wi-Fi obviously is very, very important to customers who are in using our facilities uh, with their mobile devices. But as we moved into a, a, you know, a mobile environment for staff where they were using tablets, um, robust Wi-Fi is, is critical. It's essential for that to be effective. And then 13, we introduced self-service registration. And this is really a, a device, a standalone device where customers go um, and they um, enter in their own information, uh, fill in uh, you know, the, the, the blanks uh, with their uh, pertinent information, hit send or enter, and it goes and populates the ILS. And then they, they walk over to staff showing their ID and uh, they complete the transaction, issue them a card and all to go. So when we, when we introduce all of these things, when all of these were up and running, we really, probably 90 to 95% of the activity, the work that was taking place at the desk, just disappeared. It just stopped happening there. So that whole service interaction, the entire service model had changed because of the self-service, uh, these self-service elements. Um, and so that got us to thinking and, and looking at, well, so if, if that's all changed, you know, what, what else should we change about the model? And why is that big piece of furniture sitting in the, you know, uh, in the middle of the, um, the library when it's not really being utilized. It's all uh, driven and handled through self-service. Um, so that started us down uh, the path to fully mobile. So in 13, uh, we put together a fully mobile service team and um, their, their charge was really to develop this. The, the whole, the entire model, what it looked like, uh, they had to um, develop the workflow. They needed to develop a cashless model, uh, you know, staff, we're, we're going to be out and about, so they were not going to have you know, a pocket full of change or, or a money belt of some sort. And so they needed to develop a model that would be cashless, where someone was not, um, you know, there was no cash being exchanged between a customer and a staff. They, um, they had developed the technology. They had identified a tablet that we would use. They had identified um, a, a, a cart, a mobile cart, which I'll show you in a second what that is and kind of how we transition even away from that. Uh, since then, uh, then they also had to develop the training. And so all those pieces were very important, they were critical. And we did uh, introduce a pilot uh, that was uh, handled at the Information Reference Department. Um, at one location here in Maine, which is, it, there, it's not a circulating agency, so it was a fairly simple transition, but it was important to try to, to get them out and about and using the tablet and placing holds and helping customers find information. The Westwood branch, you know, initially, we, we basically said, hey, just for one hour of the day, take the tablet and, and, and try it and see what works and what are the problems, what are the issues, the concerns, what, what happens when you do that. And it really, uh, it was those, that pilot was very, very beneficial. And those folks, uh, the manager of both those locations, each of those locations was on that, uh, that mobile service team as well. So it was important, uh, you know, their feedback and, and how things were going, how things were working were very critical. In 14 and 15, we introduced RFID, or implemented RFID. Now, th this is not required in a, in a fully mobile environment, but uh, for locations who have RFID, you know it's extremely, there's a huge return from a service standpoint. Customers love it, it's fantastic in terms of speed and ease of access and using it for checking out material. So uh, it, um, it, was, it was very beneficial from that standpoint. It really helped us, I think, in, um, in our transition to, to fully mobile. And then in 15, um, you know, we, as Kim mentioned, we began uh, designing and building and, and opened uh, three new branch locations. Two of them were built from the ground up. The third was a, was a renovated uh, building that had been donated to the library that we used and really um, gutted and sort of created a, uh, a, a branch. And, and desk, none of those locations had a desk. They were built with the understanding, with the idea that we would introduce a fully mobile service model um, at those um, uh, those locations when they opened, and I would tell staff um, that you know failure was not an option here. We could not open a brand new, beautiful new branch, uh, have customers walk in and just you know uh, love the place, and then the fully mobile model would just you know crash and burn. We couldn't do that. It had to work. It had to work very well. It had to be seamless. It had to flow. So they really spent a lot of time not just developing the model but a lot of time um, 
working on it, testing it, utilizing it, going through various scenarios so they could, you know, just to make sure it worked and every aspect of it worked. So that was critical and is very important. But again, the branches, we'll show you a photo of those here in a second, but they were designed not just with the service area, not just with out of the desk, but the entire sort of service approach was, was, in, it was designed intentional and in how it was laid out as well as a branch and some low shelving so the staff could see the entire building. Um, so it was, it was a very, very, very beneficial and exciting uh, project there with those three locations. In 16, uh, we um, expanded fully mobile to two additional branch libraries and also our, low, our main library's uh, genealogy and local history department. The uh, two branches, one was a very small rental facility that we had moved and uh, were able to incorporate that and, and kind of moving forward any significant undertaking uh, certainly facility-wide will will incorporate. It's an excellent opportunity um, as you're replacing carpet or doing, you know, some major renovation to then trans transition that branch to a fully mobile service model. And that's what we did with the Green Hills branch. And then our Loveland branch which is also a rental, um, but we expanded its space and it's our 11th, the 11th busiest location in our system and we expanded that space and introduced fully mobile there. And um, it was, you know, it went very well. And that was exciting because of the, the, the volume of activity that goes on there at that the Loveland branch. And they, they you know, it, um, it was really kind of a seamless introduction of that fully mobile model. And then this year, uh, we had a number of locations uh, identified that would be on mobile. We just completed one a, a couple of weeks ago. And these are the first ones where we just said, you know, here we've identified the branches, let's convert them to fully mobile service model. We did some few, a few tweaks with, uh, you know, when you remove a desk, you've got carpet you have to replace and some flooring and some other things that, that uh, need to be uh, changed. And, you know, like I say, adding hotspots and, and a few other infrastructure changes. But by and large, we've identified those. We, we tweaked a little bit facility-wise and technology-wise, and then we roll out the uh, fully mobile. So uh, that's our uh, first step into that. We have one completed. We have another one underway uh, that should be completed before the end of the year as well. Uh, let's see. There we go. Okay. Uh, so how it works. So staff are um, they're stationed in a service area, in a service location, and that is a, a central location. As, as people enter the building, uh, they it's obvious where the service uh, area is, and it's obvious where the staff member is located. And uh, the person is, is mobile and is moving around, but but uh, you, you can almost every every time I've been in one of these locations, I, I run you know right into a staff member who's there. So while they're mobile, they're you know they're not they're not going long, and we don't really end up with a, we don't have a situation where a customer is going, I can't find anybody. It's really not a concern or issue that we've experienced. Uh, but they're stationed in a service area. Uh, they're there to welcome uh, customers as they enter the building. Uh, they're there to direct them to, you know, of course, wherever they need to go and to educate them, which is very, very, very important um, because uh, you know, staff, the customer needs to know they're, they see the changes that have taken place. They understand things have, have changed. So um, customer staff need to educate them as to what has changed, the, the, the service model, the process, where things are, uh, how they check out material, check in material, where they pick up the holes, all those pieces in terms of the what and the how. They also need to understand the why. Why did we do this? And it's important that staff understand the why, but it's also important that they communicate that to users of the library, why did we make this change? Why do we do that? <clears throat> uh, they're obviously the roving throughout the branch. We're being proactive. Um, you know, can I help you? Is there anything I can get for you today? Um, you know, it's 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 the approach of, of going to the customer, meeting the customer where they are, not forcing them to come to us. Um, they monitor for security issues. It's really sort of a a benefit, a side benefit, I think, uh, of this, and that you have staff out in a location. They're more active. They're more they're they're more visible. Uh, they're interacting with the customers, so it does. They, they're able to monitor security issues, and I think they're able to actually uh, keep those security issues and concerns down uh, as well, because they are more visible and um, they're they're out and about. 
obviously they assist the customer with self-check, self-check in, uh, library card, registration, and host. All those things, while they're self-service, are not, it's not you're on your own. You no, know, staff are there to help and assist them and to be flexible and help in, in whatever way in which they can. Um, they um, utilize a tablet, a Surface 3. Uh, most the new ones are fours, but we have a, some three still out there. They have a docking station. Um, and which they use as needed. And so I'll talk a second about we moved away from a cart to a docking station. I'll show you some photos of what that looks like. But it's where they, it's sort of where they end, not where they start. They don't, they don't hang around it. They don't hang around as you would or, or be stationed at a docking station. They're out mobile, you know, being proactive and roving throughout the brand. If they need to go and help a customer, they need maybe a surface, they need, uh, the, you know, a tablet can be a little clunky if you're trying to, you know, search a person's record and look at some, some, uh, you know, delve into what the issue of concern is. So they, they need to dock it, and then they have a keyboard, a full screen, and a sort of work service that they can work from. So that's, that's if they need it, that's where they go to. Uh, mobile, uh, uh, voice over IP phone, so they're not tied to a phone. Uh, again, uh, a cashless model, and this is, this is really a coin op. A, um, it, it, it's paper print. You know, it's the idea that you can you can go in, you can create an account uh, on your your library account, your library card account, uh, and use uh, uh, dollars there that you can then use to pay for you know prints or whatever you need. There's a coin op which you can insert money into uh, with a, um, a copier as well. If push comes to shove, whatever's working doesn't work, and you know we can't make the cashless thing work. Staff do have a safe in the back. They do have some, if somebody needs a change or something that we have to do, they can do it. Uh, but by and large, cashless is the approach we've taken in a location and it's actually worked very, 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 very well. It's one that I thought staff may would at some point push back on significantly, but that has not happened, been very successful. Uh, each of those um, docking stations, a piece of furniture has a lock drawer with some cards, library cards, pens and paper, uh, and, and you know, one of the sort of uh, you know, I guess arguments against this from a from a staff perspective has has been well, we have a lot of stuff behind our desk. We have a lot of items. We have a lot of things we need to use and have access to. But when it gets right down, we get right down to it. They need some you know, they need some library cards that they can issue, pens, papers, and a few odds and ends, and they fit into a drawer, which is which is locked. So uh, that uh, actually you know worked very well. Um, and then, you know, how it works primarily, they're there to focus on the customer. They're there to, to help and assist the customer um, uh, as needed, where they're at, go where they are, find them, be proactive, help and assist them in, in however way they can. Uh, some tweaks. So, you know, once you're rolling, once we were rolling with this, um, you know, nothing's perfect right out of the box. So, so we had to, we, you know, we get, we'd look at it uh, and, and made some tweaks over the, over the course of, uh, since we began introducing it. Cash boxes, again, uh, we were kind of open to, okay, do we need to install a cash box into one of these docking stations, lock it and secure it, but really staff to say, no, the cashless model works, works very well. So we resisted that and, and not done that and based on their, uh, their feedback. Uh, drop boxes, which is, these were RFID drop boxes. So inside the three branches that we built, we installed, uh, with Biba Tech, that was the vendor, drop boxes. So you return your material through the slot, it goes down a chute, at the end of the chute, there's an antenna, an RFID antenna, and in theory, it should check in the item. And the, the, just the, you know, the, it, it wasn't working as well as we would like it to work. And staff began not trusting it, so we've um, kind of backed off on using those, even though in theory they should work, uh, and should work well, uh, but we've not deployed those beyond those three locations. But we did turn on self-check-in at the self-check. So its functionality exists. Uh, we turned it on, turned it on everywhere, and whether it's fully mobile or not, and uh, customers use it, and they like it, and it's you know, it, it works well. People like to check in their own stuff, uh, get receipts, and it's all been checked in, and they walk out feeling comfortable that they're not gonna get a clean return at, at some point uh, down the road. <clears throat> so the mobile card is was fine, and it looks very much like um, you know, you would see a, a nurse or a doctor maybe using in a in a in a hospital that they would wheel around wheel around into your room and update information. Very similar to that, and so we rolled three of those out at those initial three locations. But what we found is they 
one, they're, they're not inexpensive. Uh, they, you, you can charge them, there's a battery, and you charge them up, and then you can, you can move them around, but the batteries didn't seem to say charge, and staff did not use them that way. So we didn't really need a cart to push around. The kind of cart stayed in one spot, and staff were being mobile, and it would come back to the cart and dock. Um, so they were not using it the way that maybe we were thinking of it initially. So we moved from the car to a physical station. I'll show you what that looks like in a second and as a, as a docking station. Um, Kim had mentioned, you know, uh, triple I, uh, some challenges there is our, our software vendor, our ILS vendor, and, you know, working in mobile, working mobile with, with triple I product is a little challenging, but it works and it works well uh, enough and staff are able to use it. Uh, but you know the the ILS world has really not kept up, I think, uh, with uh, with mobile technology in the way that uh, we the world is, I think, today, and it's kind of unfortunate. But but it works, and staff use it, works well, and and it's it's, it's been fine. Uh, again, we we did strengthen some of the tweaks, the the uh, the hotspots and and bandwidth. Primarily, the hotspots and bandwidth was there, but you you, know, you dropping uh, is really you know, bad service when you're in a mobile environment you don't want you don't want to drop um, so uh, your connectivity is very important the strength of Wi-Fi is very important so when that would happen technology staff would go out and they often would add a hot spot where it went in any sort of where it was needed and uh, it worked um, so that it was yeah, effective and there was no again no no dropping of, uh, of service so so there's some tweaks you know anytime you do something you roll out something new, certainly something that's significantly new uh, like this and a major chain of service, we need to pay attention to folks and get, um, you know, and tweak it and be open to tweaking it as we do. So, you know, what we learned, <clears throat> staff concerns, again, listen to staff. They're doing it every day. Uh, they're out there. They're interacting with the customer. So, you know, pay attention to what you're saying. Um, and you need to also educate staff about the why, not just the what we're doing, and this is how it's going to work, and here's the process, and here's the, the functionality, and here's the tools you're going to have, but, but why are we doing it? You know, Kim mentioned some of those, you know, this is the flexibility of you know, going to the customer where the customer is, um, not having a desk, taking up not just significant amount of real estate in a building, but oftentimes, if not most of the time, uh, primary real estate, right as you enter the building, there's the desk. So, you know, it wasn't being used that way. So why do, why do we still have it? And uh, taking up some valuable real estate that we could use for displaying materials and some other things and just being proactive. You know, so that's the why. Pay attention to the why and communicate the why. Training is so important. Uh, early on, we were, we were kind of training it. We were learning it as we go. Uh, and we did some training, obviously, but we formalized that since, and uh, this recent rollout this year, we had a very formal training process, a, a curriculum, a, a training guide that um, that we took staff through to really get them up to speed, make them feel very comfortable with the new model on um, opening day. Uh, and listen to those working in the model, and then separate legitimate concerns from disagreement with the decision. And so, you know, staff gives us their feedback, and again, that is very helpful. Uh, and it's most helpful, if not always helpful, when they're working in the model, not someone who is not currently working in a model, but maybe they're concerned about the various pieces of it, or they're worried they're going mobile, or whatever the case is, and they're, 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 they're having a lot of questions or complaints about it. But the people working it, the staff working it day in and day out are not communicating those to us. Those are the ones we're listening to, because those are the ones who are experiencing each and every day. And then, you know, folks just disagree with, with some decision, and that's fine, but what we're after is, you know, one of those legitimate concerns and problems that we can work on, that we can improve, that we can address. Those are, that's what we want to hear. We want to make it better. We want to make it better for everybody and make it better, especially for the customer walking through, um, through the door. And again, tweak is needed. You know, be open to, to making um, changes as needed. <clears throat> the, um, the right manager in place is very important. Uh, and we've been lucky in, in this area, uh, but it's very important to have the right manager in place when you convert, because uh, they have to, they really have to sell it to the staff. They're, they're interacting with their staff each and every day throughout the week, and they have to sell the concept, the idea, get them excited about it, uh, turn it into very, and it is a very positive thing. So it's mostly nerves and kind of the unknown and those sorts of things. So you're trying to get them 
um, excited. And so the right manager and a very positive attitude in a manager is very, very, very important. And then lastly here in terms of, you know, don't overthink it because while it is different, it, it's really not that complicated and it's not that complex. Um, it, it's the same sort of pieces that you that that are done at the desk are kind of being done differently for from a self service standpoint. But uh, don't you know? There's no need to really overthink it. It is um, it is um, um, for the most part a simple change. Although again, it's a, it's a major change, which then makes it a little more complex. So what's next? Uh, so we're continuing to expand our model. As Kim said, it will take us a while to get all of our locations. Uh, a couple of departments here at Maine, Teen Spot, Children's Learning Center, we're, we're, involved, we're involved in some changes here at Maine. So those two locations, those two departments will go fully mobile when, when we have that, uh, uh, when their facility related change takes place. Uh, more branches, big, small, multi-floor, old, new, uh, rental, uh, you know, all of the above. You know, we're we're about trying to. Uh, you know, they'll all go fully mobile at some point. Uh, so, um, you know, busy, slow, doesn't matter. We we want to uh, convert all of those, and it's very important that we um, um, uh, that we do that, and you know, identify a number that we can do each year, and then I kind of work toward uh, transitioning those to the new model. Uh, so. Uh, early this year, I, uh, we created a position for a customer experience manager, and who is who has a number of roles, all of course related to customer service, um, but he's also involved in the development of uh, the training for uh, the fully mobile, and he's the one doing the training. So that's been a huge change with this most recent rollout. And as I said earlier, he developed a curriculum. We have a training guide. Uh, he spends time with the staff in a classroom working with the tablet, and he takes them out to the floor for an hour, comes back to the classroom, and back. I mean, it's really an effective approach to training staff. And again, it just it just allays all fears. They just really understand it and feel very comfortable with it when you when you roll it out. So, so take a look at. It. So this is a photo of our Reading branch, and it is one of those branches that was. Um, constructed from the ground up and constructed as a fully mobile service uh, unit. So what you see here is a staff member uh, and she is, at, right, you're entering the branch, entering the location, she has a tablet. The tablet has a, a strap that she can uh, you know, strap over her shoulder if she's walking around. It has a sleeve where she can put her hand or her left hand under the sleeve and just steady the tablet and enter in whatever she needs to. This is the cart that we initially rolled out, as you can see, it's plugged in, um, and, and again, it looks very much like the one you would see in a hospital. And it, it in theory, it, it seemed fine and worked in many ways, but staff did not use it that way. They were not being mobile; they're not pushing it around. So it was, um, you know, sort of uh, an expense we didn't need to undertake, and we looked at a, a different uh, approach to to the docking station and moved away from the cart. This is the same branch. As you enter the door, you run into the service area. And this is, it's obvious, this is a service area. Uh, you know, you have self-check machines. Uh, we have, uh, there's a docking station on the back side. I'll give you another view of that. And then um, self-registration as well. This is the uh, return bin here uh, to the left on the wall. And then you have um, whole self-service holes in the back. But this, this entire area is, is obviously the area where service takes place, where someone is there, staff are in and around the space uh, to help and assist the customer. So it's not hidden, it's pretty straightforward, and, and like I say, it's obvious for, for the customer. Again, staff, when, when customers walk in, they need to train them and, and educate them on the, and, on the flow and how things work, but by and large, you know, customers get it um, pretty quickly. You see also back in here, uh, the shelves are low. Uh, you can see throughout the branch, it's not a, um, there's not hidden parts of the branch for the most part. So it, it is, is an open, it's designed for, for, uh, for staff to be mobile and to observe and be able to see what's going on throughout the branch. This is sort of a bird's eye view of the same branch, uh, the door, come right in, you walk right into the space, um, you know, self-check units, uh, the old cart that we would use, and then the um, return bed there. Uh, just another view of that. You got the coin op here on the the one device. 
um, but it's um, you know it's obvious all that this is the uh, docking station um, that we moved away from the cart we created um, this docking station I think I got a better picture yeah here so um, this is you know, a piece of furniture uh, that has a um, the locking a drawer there uh, it has a docking station they take their tablet if they need to assist a customer if they need you know, to like I say, there's more. It's more involved, and they, they need a keyboard, they need a larger um, screen. They just dock your device, and then they begin to help the customer uh, in a fairly seamless manner. Uh, and they, they got a little space. They got a receipt printer. They have a barcode. They also there is an antenna there as well, so they can check out RFID material. And um, so that's this is you know what it is. Oh yeah, and and uh, Kim's giving me a <laughs> reminding me of something over here. Yeah, and they're both on the same side, so the customer and the staff are on the same side. So there's no there's no separation. There's no barrier between the customer and the staff. It's like you know, walk over here. Let's let's look at your account. Let's try to resolve this problem. Let's try to do um, what do we need to do. And again, this is where they end, so to speak, not where they begin. So staff are not they're not stationed here. They're not hanging around the docking station. Uh, they're out moving, and if they need to go to the docking station, then they go. Another thing that's kind of interesting is, so there's staff workstations in the back. There's a sync configuration. So the tablet is, and we had a staff member tell us this, you know, that really you become one with your tablet because in all aspects of, of their work, uh, their the tablet is, is a part of it. So if they're on the floor, they take their tablet off the docking station in their staff at their staff cube or desk. And they take it out and they use it and work with it and they dock it outside out uh, in the uh, the public area if they need to and then when their their time is done or shift is over they walk back to the to the uh, their staff area and they, they dock it and they, they they use it for any uh, staff work they're doing so it does become a part of of their uh, their workflow it's an example of course of a, of a staff member helping and assisting a customer at a um, out in the uh, in the stacks, uh, you know, and, and they have the tablets. You could search for something. We place a hold. Um, we can resolve a problem or issue or what's your library card. I mean, just any any question, they can they can answer it there and not have to walk back or have them walk back or follow them back to a station. This is one of my favorite photos, I think, of fully mobile service because this is Kelly Heaton. She is a children's librarian at that uh, Reading location. And you see, you know, she she is helping these two young ladies, and she's bending over. She has a tablet in her hand. She's trying to probably find a book for them and reserve a book for them, or, or you know, help them locate something, an item that they're looking for. And you know, they don't, you know, as we know, children don't necessarily come to the desk. They won't necessarily come to and seek out an adult. Uh, but Kelly, because this is this is a you know a, a fully mobile environment, she can go out and ask. Uh, these two young ladies, do you need help? Do you need assistance? And then she's there working with them, uh, not on a no barrier. She's working with them and showing them the technology and trying to uh, you know find whatever information that uh, that they're in need of. Uh, and this is just another view. I, this may have been the opening uh, of uh, Ratty the day we opened the branch. It's, it's very very busy, and staff are helping and assisting customers. Um, you know, it's it's it, it just allows them to be out and about and not tied to to a, a desk. <clears throat> this is a self-service holds at either Reading or St. Bernard. They're, they're very similar, but um, you know, they're right there with the self-check. Of course, people walk in, grab their self-service, their hold, uh, walk to self-check, check it out, and out they go. And uh, you know, it, it it works seamlessly. Really, it's a it's an excellent, great. Um, service and transition that we made a number of years ago. These are self-service holds at that Loveland branch. This is the one I mentioned earlier. It's our 11th busiest branch. You can tell by the volume of holds. Uh, they do a, a booming business and uh, they have uh, all the holds there and then here are the, uh, their, uh, their service area with their self-check uh, machines there adjacent uh, to it. This is just a bird's eye view of, of the St. Bernard branch, I believe, and again, looks very similar to Reading. But you have the door, they come right into the door, and there it is. There's the service area, there are the holes. It's all confined into this area. So it's not a mystery. It's not trying to find where I do something, find somebody, or where I get help. It's right here. It's right. It's obvious. It's front and center as soon as they uh, walk into the, um, into the branch. 
So that's that's kind of fully mobile in a uh, nutshell um, for us. I don't know if we want to do some questions or how we want to do this. Well, thank you so much, Greg and oh. Tim. Um, it looks like we have time for a couple questions from our listeners. Uh, just a reminder that the full Q&A will be emailed next week if we don't get to your question today. Um, our first question is, how can I eliminate service eliminate the service desk when I have reserved textbooks which tie us to the service desk area in a small academic library? I'm sorry, that they have what tied to the desk? Uh, reserved textbooks. Oh, okay. Well, I mean, they're there are any number of ways of doing that, I'm sure. You'd have to look at your facility and, and where you put those. Uh, if they're, you know, they have to be uh, in some secure location, you know, you'd have to determine how you do that. I don't think it would prevent or stop the need for um, utilizing or going fully mobile. I think it's the same with, with, um, with holes in a public environment that we put out in front, out to the public. I know academic holes and reserves are a little different in how they're handled and how staff and, and students use those, but I don't really see that that would be a major stumbling block. There has to be some uh, some way within a you know a uh, location to configure configure in such a way that that would uh, that would work. Our next question is: uh, Are customers ever intimidated by staff approaching them? And another question that kind of uh, ties in is, have you run into any kickback from people not wanting to be disturbed while they're working? No, I, I, don't, I, I don't know of any. Uh, I think it's, it is kind of a, you know, I think it, staff sometimes will say that, that they, they fear that the customer will not want to see them or hear them or they'll come up and bug them. But, you know, the, if staff are walking around a branch, uh, you know, for an apartment, it, it, they they know when, what someone's doing, and they can ask them one time, can you, you need assistance? And if they say, no, I'm fine, I'm good, they, they don't have to, every time they walk by them, ask, repeat the question. So uh, I, I don't think that really, that's not a, that's not a complaint I've heard. I want to answer, I just want to ask you, people, I know when they're sending out the leave me alone five, I don't need any help. I mean, I, I see this when I'm shopping, you know, about the time kind of presentation, if I need any help, I sometimes I get a little like back branded and say to them, I'll let you know if I need any help or, or something. So you have to be able to take your cues from the people you're assisting and not, um, and not ignore those kind of nonverbals. Okay, um, our next question. Uh, does every staff member have a tablet, and is there a pager to call staff from one area to another as needed? Uh, they, they do. As I mentioned, um, at our locations, there may be some part-time staff that are, that are sharing uh, a tablet, but staff who have a workstation in the back, they, they're actually assigned a tablet and, that, and a docking station in the back. So it's really a part of their, it's a tool that they use, whether they're out helping the customer or in the back. Um, doing, you know, whatever they may be doing, their off desk duties may be. So, yes, they're assigned, um, they're assigned the tablet. Now, you don't have to do that. You could have a number. I think going into it, we were thinking of this approach. You just have a number of tablets. You keep them charged. When somebody goes out, they grab a tablet and out they go. But really, it benefits everyone, I think, to assign the tablet to the, to the staff member because, again, they be, sort of become one with that tablet. It becomes theirs. They become very, very, uh, become very familiar with it. But we have had to use a page or anything to call someone to an area. Um, you do have to, you know, normally at the desk we would have more than one person staff. And, and so as long as you have sufficient staffing on your floor, uh, we still found it to be a problem. In fact, I would say because they're mobile, uh, they can stick their head in the back and say, hey, I need some help out here. So it's not, they're not really tied to, to any, any one place either. Okay, great. Uh, next question that we have. I love the mobile idea to service patrons, but I want to know how to balance this with a workload that requires desk time. 
Are they, I, are they referring to sort of like off desk work or duties? I believe so, yes. Well, I mean, it's the same same approach. So if someone's spending an hour out working with the public, then they on the schedule, a desk schedule for that day, you know, Greg is working, uh, you know, out on the floor from 12 to 1, and then I'm back in my office area, you know, 1 to 2 or whatever the case may be. So that's scheduled. So we, we never like staff work doing work, doing busy work out on the desk because uh, you do get customers who then are resistant to walk up to a staff member because they appear to be busy. Uh, so they won't ask some questions. So that, that's something we, we, we certainly discourage and staff should do their work in the back, their busy work in the back. And when they're out front, when they're on the floor, they're there to serve the customer. The focus is on the customer, not on you know whatever task they have assigned that they're trying to work on and would normally work on at a desk. No, that's not in, done in an office area. And then most of the other would be things like issuing the library cards or, or um, giving somebody a hold where they come up or re receiving a report. And because that is all being done through the job service environment, um, that work is, is just being handled in a different way that doesn't require a transactional interaction at the desk. Okay, our next question. Uh, we are a mid-sized rural library and people come to have conversations with staff. How does this model affect patron relationships? I think it improves it 100% uh, because, you know, again, staff are being proactive, so they're approaching customers. They're, they have the flexibility to, to, to go talk to a customer, to interact with a customer, wherever that customer is within a building. So it improves the communication with the customer, you know, hundredfold because they're not, uh, they're not sitting there waiting for the customer to come to them. They have an opportunity. And then the self-check, uh, you know, there's nothing to prevent them from walking up and saying hi. They know a customer is a familiar customer. Nothing preventing them from walking up and saying, you know, hello, Jane, I haven't seen you for a while. Have a great day. Uh, or assisting them in some way. So, they're, they're, you know, the interaction, the opportunity for our interaction, I think, uh, increases uh, and, um, and uh, really is, is, is a positive change in terms of communication and interaction with customers. Uh, another question that we got, uh, how long do staff stay on their feet if they are uh, mobile librarians? Uh, generally, they'll, they'll do an hour. Uh, I mean, it would vary, but it's not, you know, they're not out there all day. Uh, but, you know, you're talking an hour shift, and, and like I say, depending upon the day and the scheduling, you may, maybe a couple hours at, at most. Uh, but they would be standing in one spot if they were at the desk. So it's really not been a problem. Uh, it's not not been a um, a concern. Okay, great. Uh, considering security issues, are staff trained specifically to evaluate and mitigate? Uh, yeah, they're trained now. They're trained whether in a fully mobile or or in a, in a desk model. Um, they're, they're, yes, and some of our locations have uh, security additional. They have security staff, whether contract or or uh, you know off-duty police officers. Uh, but all staff are trained, and we have a standards of library behavior. You know that they uh, they enforce and they utilize as a guide in terms of behavior problems or issues. So, so yeah, you know, staff have have always you know been in that environment. Now because they're proactive, now because they're out with the customer. Uh, they're actually preventing some of those because they're being visible. They can, you know, people see them, so they're less likely to engage in in, uh, in some of the uh, shenanigans they uh, they may do if they don't know a staff members around. So yes, they are trained to interact with customers, and they know that you know many many activities, many things that take place, they back off and they they call for assistance or help. And so they're aware of it. Yes. It looks like we have time for about one more question. Uh, we have a couple of school librarians uh, listening in today, and uh, they're wondering if this would be a model that would work in an elementary school library. Well, we're not elementary librarians at all, but I don't see why it wouldn't. Um, uh, it's yeah. the only type of library I've ever worked in. <laughs> uh, Kim, we're having a little trouble hearing you. Okay, I so said that's the only type of library I have not worked in is a school library. So I, I may try that yet before I, I 
finish my career, but um, I think it would work very well for the students uh, to not be, again, approaching the desk, but having the, the school librarians um, and their staff there to assist uh, as the students need them throughout the building or throughout the library rather than uh, at one service point. Okay, thank you so much. Uh, it looks like we're about out of time for today. Uh, we'd like to thank uh, both Kim and Greg for sharing their vision and insights with us all today. We hope that everyone was able to take away some newfound knowledge to support their own initiatives. A recording of this webcast will be available on the DEMCO Ideas and Inspiration website by next week so you can review the presentation and share with your colleagues. Next week you will also be receiving an email that will include the slides, a resource list, and the Q&A. You will also be receiving a survey at the end of the webinar to let us know how we did. Please take a few moments to give us your feedback and thoughts on future webinar topics. We hope that you are able to join us for our upcoming webinar, Five Ways to Transform How Your Library Works with Your Community on November 2nd. You can register now on ideas.demco.com. Again, thank you for joining us today and have a wonderful afternoon.